all this is dr mubin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is a is a breakthrough study that has demonstrated that psychedelics actually can slip through our neurons and enter the neuron and create their effect but it is not just about the effect it's not just the effect of hallucin hallucinogen or hallucination psychedelics can actually structurally change our brain which means they can change our perception and our mood for the positive for longer period of time this is the kind of effect that we have been trying we medical community has been trying to produce with serotonins and here come the psychedelics with this study demonstrated that that effect can actually be better produced by psychedelics so that is the discussion it's a beautiful study uh, i love these kind of uh, advances in science so let's look at them so this is drbean.com if you do not have access to drbean.com then there is a link in the description i think i would suggest that you get access to it and the price is really really reasonable somebody was asking me that when are we going to actually start with the courses so we actually have the courses page now up it was up for some time but then it crashed so as you can see it is taking some time so the caching mechanism for the page is still not up and the purchasing plans are still not up so we are still working on that hopefully in so this see it took a lot of time but the courses page is up for cme videos 200 dollars covid 19 750 cardiovascular 500 and so on but in the meantime all of these courses in one place for 97 or 67 dollars so that's just crazy okay so this is drbean.com what is serotonin uh, just a general idea for us that serotonin is a neurotransmitter present in a brain it is um involved in sleep and learning and memory and temperature maintenance and sexual behavior and hunger a lot of important functions and this is why when there is a problem with serotonin there is depression and anxiety this is also why we try to give selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors which try to increase the serotonin molecular levels by not letting them be reuptaken or not re- letting them be recycled and with that we try to treat depression and such um, mood uh, abnormalities this is the study that we'll be discussing today this is actually behind a paywall this manuscript so i cannot really go over the whole manuscript but i'm going to go over the interpretation of that with my drawings then some more links here as well this one is very important mechanism of dendritic arborization so let's actually start the links are the remaining links are just supportive links i also wanted to share with you this is something funny this is science direct and if you hover over the links for example let's say magic mushroom psilocybin the little uh, little text that has appeared it says learn more about psilocybin from science direct ai generated topics page so the ai has already started authoring content for us and it is already integrated actually dr bean will have ai integrated next week as well so these are the references now let's start our discussion this is the the actual paper and as you can tell from my markings that i've gone over this and now let's go over the discussion so these are gifts for humanity they are continuing the discussion is psychedelics promote neuroplasticity through the activation of intracellular 5 hydroxy tryptamine type 2 receptors and paul thank you very much so 
So Paul Menton says, is there any solid evidence of adverse reactions aside from anxiety attacks? Adverse reactions of what? Uh, serotonins or something else? So I'll answer that as you elaborate a little more. So here, 5-hydroxytryptamine type 2A receptors are the ones that we're talking about. But more importantly, neuroplasticity is the important keyword for today. What does neuroplasticity mean? The ability for our brain to, to be flexible, to learn, for example, to learn new memories is neuroplasticity. To change our behaviors is neuroplasticity. So our brain can modulate its function based on how our personality is changing or how the environment is changing. However, in many cases, this neuroplasticity, this ability reduces. And in many cases, the existing presence of this ability goes away. And so psychedelics actually use the same receptor as serotonin, but they can cause neuroplasticity and serotonin does not cause neuroplasticity. So then the question became, what is the difference? They both, the substances, serotonin or psychedelics, they act on the same receptor. Actually, the definition of psychedelic is those hallucinogens that work by acting on 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors or serotonin receptors. So by definition, they are the same thing from a chemical point of view and the receptor point of view. Still, psychedelics cause neuroplasticity and serotonin does not. That was the point of this study. The researcher said we wanted to understand why not. In that process, they found a breakthrough um, mechanism that will be used for new drugs. So let's start. M. Gregory says, so the psych So let's start. This is the abstract. I'm just going to put that here for your review for a second. You can pause and read it. And now let's start. So to understand this study, we have to understand some concepts that are really, really important. The first concept, a neuron, the functional unit of our brain, has a cell body. Imagine that the neuron actually starts with a rounded cell body. Then it starts having branches. So cell body, then it has one long branch, which is called exon, <laughs> excuse me, the impulse or the message from the neuron goes outwards using the axon. So you can think of axon as a wire that is taking the impulses away from the neuron. Then there are a bunch of small branches called dendrites. Dendrites are the one through which other neurons send messages to this neuron. So dendrites are the receivers of the signals and exon is the transmitter of the signal. Every neuron can only have one exon but can have hundreds and thousands of dendrites. Now the dendrite, this is an important concept now, the dendrite, the more complex they are, the more in number they are, the more arborized they are, the more our brains function and the better our mood and our perception of reality. So this dendrite is usually made like a tree. So there is a stem of the dendrite or spine of the dendrite. Then from that spine, various branches come out. This whole process is called arborization. And then on the ends of these processes, other neurons and their exons, they finish there. Some neurons will inhibit this neuron 
some neurons will excite this neuron and this is how the whole brain just functions by exciting and inhibiting various neurons in the chronic depression as a disease what happens is one of the the problem the structural problem that occurs is that the complexity of the dendritic site reduces the arborization reduces the number of connections with this neuron reduces the neuron start losing connections and depression occurs and we cannot just simply give more serotonin or neurotransmitters to excite the neuron a lot to compensate for the structural abnormality that has occurred we have to find ways to create more branches to modulate the dendrites we have to find ways to create neuroplasticity and in today's study you'll see that psychedelics do that serotonin does not do that okay so continuing so i have already explained the concept of arborization and that is the branches with the dendrites so dendritic complexity reduces connections if the in depression the dendritic complexity reduces the connections with other neurons break and that leads to depression what does that mean imagine this neuron is undergoing a structural change and it loses this dendrite when it loses this dendrite it would lose connection to this other neuron as well and all of a sudden this neuron is less active it is less modulated by the surrounding neurons and now this neuron is not functioning correctly and the result is depression and many other anxiety depression fear mania many many problems so take away for the talk so far dendrites their complexity their presence is very very important now as i said before arborizations or dendritic complexity determines the perception of reality determines the feelings the hunger anxiety sex all of that more complex the dendrites the more connections a neuron has the better we feel and operate and less complexity we feel bad we feel fearful and we operate incorrectly as well now psychedelics what do they do you see these neurons that are made almost like they have an afro on them these neurons have much more complexity of the dendrites produced by psychedelics <coughs> excuse me this is a strange phenomena that how come psychedelics cause actual structural change of course that then leads to functional change as well but how come this happens that is once again and we know that serotonin doesn't do it so that is a question and then the question that why does serotonin not do it and psychedelics do it why does even that become a question the reason for that to be a question is serotonin and psychedelics they act on the same receptor so now think about it two substances act on the same receptor same receptor one cause neuroplasticity one cause increase in complexity of the dendrites one cause better mood and perception <coughs> excuse me and one does not while they are acting on the same receptors 5 hydroxy tryptamine type 2 receptors that is the reason for this question that what is the difference in these two things so now before we answer that just a very quick note psychoplastogens gen mean production 
blasto means flexibility psycho means mood and psychology or the brain's function psychoplastogens are the substances that one given even in a single dose single dose can cause a rapid change and a sustained change not just rapid change but also sustained change what does that mean so i i would request you to keep this in in your mind it's not only that if that substance is taken today then the effect is today it can actually go on for days and weeks and i'll explain why so psychoplastogens single dose administered rapid sustained change ssris which then lead to serotonin they do not do this ssri can produce a rapid change although they take some time to start producing their change but once they are accumulated the the serotonin then the change can be rapid but still it is not sustained it this is like turning on a switch and then that switch turns off but psychoplastogens can cause change that is long term why so couple of things here to check one is ketamine ketamine is a drug that is known to cause or to improve neuroplasticity neuroplasticity so in this study they used ketamine as a positive control meaning if there were a bunch of cells and you wanted to see if these cells were responding to various substances by having more complexity or not then where do they compare them so they would compare them to ketamine so they would have another bunch of cells on which they'll put ketamine when those cells would respond and increase their complexity then the researchers know that these cells are able or capable of producing more complexity then when the serotonin or psychedelics are poured on the cells and they change their behavior they can then compare them to ketamine so ketamine here was used as a positive control now what they did was they used psychedelics like magic mushrooms lsds psychelines or miscaline which is actually you know those cacti it's the top of the cactus which has been dried up and powdered and what they saw was that the the psychedelics serotonergic psychedelics it create profound change in perception so that is why they cause hallucin hallucinations perception cognition mood change but with this so this can be temporary right but with this the cortical structure of the neurons cortex are top brain are superior form of the brain the pyramidal cells the the cells that are responsible for motor activity and the personality activity in the frontal cortex the cortical structure of the neuron started changing and so functional neuroplasticity occurred as well so of course when you change the structure the function would change too so what did they find this is the the core slide of this whole talk they found was that the 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptors or serotonin receptors are not only present on the surface of the cell but they are present inside the neuronal cell as well so there are two groups of of 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptors one group is attached on the surface so that the surrounding substances in the environment can modulate the neurons function however there is another group of 5 hydroxy tryptamine receptors that are sitting inside and serotonin cannot cross the cell membrane to enter in the neuron and stimulate these cells these receptors that are inside 
serotonin only stimulates the receptors that are on the surface. However, the psychedelics, they work on the same receptors, but psychedelics are a little more lipid soluble. They're a little more greasy. They're a little less water soluble. They can cross the cell membrane of the neurons, enter in the neuron, and then go and attach to the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors or serotonin receptors inside the neuron. This was not known before. This is a new finding that psychedelics enter the neuron and then bind to the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors inside. And then further new finding is that once they stimulate these receptors, then the dendrites on the neuron, they start becoming more complex, they start developing more branches, they start developing more connections. All of a sudden, think about it, if this neuron has new dendrites, which have new connections, that's not a temporary thing. It's not that I would develop the dendrites today and tomorrow the dendrites would go away. They would stay. So psychedelics would actually create a longer lasting positive effect on the brain by changing the actual structure of it. So that halluc hallucination is temporary. But the structural change and then psychological change towards positive is more longer lasting. And this is a change that serotonin cannot produce. Now, I want to connect this to some thought. With the COVID vaccines, we had the same problem with the mRNA, right? That mRNA cannot enter a cell. So what did they do? They wrapped it in lipid nanoparticles. I believe after this study, future serotonins will be modified or will be given transporters so that they can enter the neuron inside and go and act on the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptors inside the neuron. And that will bring us towards a different kind of treatment for depressions and anxieties and fears and manias which will be more permanent and more longer lasting and better solutions. This is the contribution of this study. Well, you could say that one can use psychedelics too, sure. But not everybody is inclined to use psychedelics. So they'll have to make drugs that can do this behavior of going into the neuron and then stimulating the 5-hydroxytryptamine or serotonin receptors inside the neuron. Now, there is still something that is not known. That is, when the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptor that is, <coughs> excuse me, that is inside the neuron, when that is stimulated, why does that cause the dendrites to start growing and start making more branches? On the other hand, compared to when the 5-hydroxytryptamine receptor outside the cell, this on the cell membrane, when that is stimulated, why does that not cause this, this reaction? We have no idea. We actually did not, before this study, we did not even know that there are two separate mechanisms of stimulation. So we have found that out. But what happens inside the cell? When serotonin receptor inside the cell is stimulated, what is the mechanism that leads to then making more dendrite com complex or arborize the dendrites? That's not known. So the result is, with psychedelics, not only we get the hallucinations or altered perception of reality, we actually get a functional and structural change in the brain. Now, here was the important part of the test. They said, if it is not psychedelics, but if it is the serotonin receptor inside the cell and stimulation of that receptor that matters, then let's try to inject serotonin 
inside the neuron, let the serotonin go and, and stimulate the receptor instead of psychedelics. And let's see if the serotonin does the same thing as psychedelics do. Do, do you catch what they did? So they knew now that psychedelics do this behavior of going into the neuron and stimulating the receptor for serotonin and causing this, this change in the, brain, in the neuronal structure. They wanted to rule out that psychedelics are not doing something else. Maybe we do not know, but they are, they are binding with some other enzyme and some other proteins and doing some other hidden mechanism. So they said, remove the psychedelics from this whole equation. If it is the intracellular serotonin receptor behavior, then find a way to send serotonin in the cell. Let that serotonin stimulate the serotonin receptors inside the cell. And if it does the same behavior as, as psychedelics, then we know it is intracellular serotonin receptors that do this. So they did two experiments. Number one, on this side, and this is a very common thing, they did electroporation. Electroporation is that you take a cell and you give it electrical jolts. Under those electrical shocks, the cell becomes porous. It becomes, it develops tiny microscopic holes in it. And then through those holes, you can throw things in the cell that normally are not allowed to get in. So what they did was they put some serotonin around the cell. Then they gave the cells or neurons electrical jolts. This is in vitro. This was not a human or, or an animal. And that allowed the serotonin to get into the cell neuron of course, then go and attach with the serotonin receptors inside the cell. The result was that these neurons started developing more dendrites. These neurons started becoming complex. So they proved that they did not need psychedelics. They just needed something to get into the neuron and stimulate the serotonin receptor. Then they did another experiment in which they had mice. These were depressed mice. And what they did was, in these mice, they had genetically modified them to express <laughs> excuse me, the mice were expressing CERT transporters, serotonin transporters. These are transporters on the membrane of the cell which allows the serotonin to come in the cell. So these mice were depressed mice, but they were genetically modified to also express CERT transporters which allowed the serotonin to get into the cell. And when that happened, these mice started having head twitch responses the head twitch response is when a mouse is super happy, the, they are hallucinating, their perception has changed. It is as if they are under the effect of a psychedelic. But there was no psychedelic. There was only serotonin that had get, gotten into the neuron. So this proved in an animal model as well that it is really the intracellular serotonin receptor and the stimulation of that which causes hallucinations plus causes neuroplasticity and, and psychoplasticity. Beautiful, beautiful uh, experiments. So, no CERT, serotonin transporter protein. And if you give serotonin, there was no head twitch by the mouse. The mouse stayed depressed. But if, if there were serotonin transport and serotonin and the mouse was depressed, when this was done, mouse started having head twitch responses, meaning it became happier and started hallucinating.
So then the question is, what is the takeaway? Conclusion is this. My conclusion, they did not say this in their, in their paper. My conclusion is, neuroplasticity sometimes is very important for depression. And maybe psychedelics are useful. That's one. Their conclusions are, there can be now new drugs, new drugs for depression. The drugs will actually get into the neuron and still work on the serotonin receptors. So they could still be SSRI-like drugs, but instead of working outside to increase the level of uh, serotonin by not letting it be recycled, these drugs may actually get into the neuron and then stimulate they may be serotonin agonists that can get into the neuron and stimulate the serotonin receptors. There may be modified serotonin itself and given, given the serotonin the capability to get into the neuron. So how can that be? They can have a methylated serotonin or they can have tryptamine they can have dimethyltryptamine, DMTs. They can modify them that they can enter, these substances can enter the cell. And when they can enter the cell and then they can combine with the serotonin receptors, these then can cause structural changes. Then, this discovery allows us to use drugs in a more targeted fashion, meaning... Today we give serotonin that acts everywhere wherever serotonin is. But now you could create a serotonin that gets in the neuro neuron and only works on the serotonin receptors inside the neuron instead of outside the neuron. So you may be able to modulate the behavior in a different way and would not have as many side effects of excessive serotonin as we get today. And once again, they did not say it. I'm going to say this. I think this would enable us to have folks in depression because of cortical changes, because of the brain tissue changes, to come out of those depressions and have more permanent, more longer lasting effect on them instead of continuously needing the medication. So that is the that is a study, beautiful study. I think it's, a, it's such a breakthrough uh, in this area. So let's very quickly see if there are any comments and then we stop. Betty says, wow, well, yes. <laughs> Me, Pallard says, Wonder if the scientists were on mushrooms when they had the idea for hypothesis. Maybe. So, Primal says mushrooms are cheap, tablet is expensive. Correct. So, I think the only not exactly the needed. Plus, if the mushrooms are creating that um, hallucinogenic effect, they would like to have drugs that do not create that effect. Again, for some people, it, I have never taken these, so I have no idea it, how, what does it really mean. Old School says, can we get the likes up a bit higher? It's much small thing we can do for Dr. Bean. Thank you very much. Like, like, and like. <laughs> and subscribe and share as well. Okay. Roger says, we need not new drugs. They're already made by nature. If they do, so I feel like they'll blow it up. Yeah, nature has made some of these too. Magic mushrooms, LSDs. Now, <coughs> excuse me. As far as I know from my reading, not from experience, that these are not um, habit-forming or craving-forming. That is true. Mexican mushrooms. These are actually the magic mushrooms are, I believe, magic uh, Mexican mushrooms.
Betty says, hello, hello, back to you. <laughs> Primal seems to be very uh, uh, experienced with this. Smoking DMT has the least hallucination with eyes open in only 15 minutes. Okay, so very good. We have an idea of what is happening here. Derek says, shrooms changed my whole worldview. I, a very positive way, life-changing, long-lasting effect. That's what they do. That's what they're finding it. And now we also know why. There is actually structural, they actually knew before that psychedelics do cause structural changes. They did not know how. So now they know that these are intracellular uh, receptors. They still do not know that when the intracellular receptors are stimulated, what is the internal mechanism that leads to making those changes? But yes, those changes are positive because more complexity in the brain, more connections in the brain is actually a positive thing. And it is longer lasting. You won't get dendrites developed today and tomorrow they go away. Correct. So uh, psychedelics. There are many drugs that are halluc hallucinogens. However, psychedelics by definition are those hallucinogens that act by acting on the serotonin receptors. So that is why all, psych you can still call them serotonergic psychedelics, but psychedelics generally are serotonergic by definition. <laughs> Not Ben says, sounds like Big Pharma would take out the fun. Okay, so let's finish this before 40 minutes. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. There are links in the description. You can buy an access to Dr. Bean or you can use PayPal to support this work or you can become a member of Substack or you can become a member of patrons as well. All links are in the description. Of course, if you do not want to do any of that, that is fine as well. With this, thank you very much. <coughs> Tomorrow... 10 o'clock in the morning, tomorrow is Saturday, but 10 o'clock in the morning and 1 in the uh, Eastern time, 10 morning Pacific time, we'll have Dr. Stephen Phillips. We'll talk about chronic inflammation and chronic COVID, long COVID as well. So I'll come live once more over the weekend. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.